Hello everyone and welcome to the Aster Sew Along. I'm glad you're here. I'm Heather Peterson. I'll be your host for the Sew Along. So I'm the designer of the pattern that we're doing for the Sew Along and I'm also the designer of the Indigo Garden Fabric Collection, which is the fabric that is featured in the pattern. So as I mentioned, I'm glad that you're going to be sewing along with us. And if you haven't done a Sew Along before, you'll find they're a great way to stay on task because every week we'll have an assignment of what we're working on. It's a great way to learn some new techniques. And it's also a fun way to be a part of a community where you follow along with the hashtag on Instagram and see what everybody's making, how their blocks are looking, what their fabric combinations look like, and all that. So if you haven't done a sew along before, those are some of the fun parts about it. If you signed up early to be part of the sew along, you would have already gotten the introductory email. So that's how I will be communicating with you each week and every Friday I'll post, or I will send you a new email. And within that email, there'll be a link to my YouTube video for that week's instruction. So if you haven't signed up for the email list, you can still do it. You can uh, let me know in the comments below if you'd like to be added to the list. Otherwise, you can just subscribe to my YouTube channel and then each week you'll get um, a new video there. You'll wanna turn on your notifications so that you'll see those videos each week as they come in. So my business name is Anka's Treasures. So that's A-N-K-A, -A, like the singer Paul Anka, if you've heard of him. Um, so if you go to YouTube and search Anka's Treasures, you'll find my um, YouTube site where you can subscribe and be part of these videos. So um, a couple things that you'll need to participate in the Sew Along, you'll need your fabric. Now you don't have to use the Indigo Garden Collection, of course you can use your stash. You'll need fat eighths, two for each block. Um, if you pre-ordered the kit from me, those have all shipped out and you would have already gotten your bundle with all your fat eighths. Um, you will also need the Aster pattern. So this is available as a paper pattern or as a PDF pattern. Um, I'll put a link in the comments to both the pattern and the fat quarter bun or the kit so that you can get those if you need them. And then just a comment on the sizes. We're gonna be making the four by five, which is the throw size from the pattern. But you can see there's lots of different sizes that you can make from a wall quilt to a king size quilt. So you can customize this to a size that you need. So let's talk a little bit about the schedule. Things. This is our first week getting together. So for the beginning, um, you're gonna wanna read through your pattern and figure out and circle because there's so many steps, you're gonna wanna circle which size pertains to what you're doing. So that'll be your first step. Then we're gonna do the cutting in the first week and we're gonna make this little half square triangle block all in week one. In week two, you're going to be making this block right here. Week three, we're going to make this section here. And week four, we're going to add this piece to that section. The next week, we're going to make this part of the block. The following week, we're going to put the sashing in and the little folded corners here. And then on our last week, we're going to sew the sashing together and the rows together and add the borders. So after this video, I'm going to post a little snapshot of what the schedule is so that if you want to, you can screenshot it and save it on your phone so that each week you'll know what we're gonna be working on. So um, after this, there'll be a little video on the cutting and a little video tutorial on how to make our first block for this week. So stay tuned for that. Okay, we're ready to begin our cutting. So this means you'll have read through your pattern. You will have circled the sizes that pertain to what you're making. As you can see, they're color coded here. Uh, so you know what you'll be cutting. Then you're going to want to go through your stack of fat eighths and figure out um, pairings. I like to kind of plan mine ahead and do colors that I think looked good together. So I went through and sorted and got my 12 pairings. Then you're going to set one stack aside for the center stars, that's what they're called in the cutting, and one stack aside for the outer star frame. So that's this orange fabric here. So you're gonna make those two stacks and then you're gonna cut them according to the instructions. We're gonna cut the center star pieces first and you can see there's a little handy cut, uh, cutting chart there. So um, I'm gonna see if I can hold that so you can see it better. So what we're gonna do is we need six two and three quarter inch squares cut right here. And you could cut those individually if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and cut a full, like a, a long strip here. So I've added that up and six times two and three quarter is a 16 and a half inch strip. So I'm gonna cut them 17 inches, two of them right there that are two and three quarter inch wide. Then I'm gonna cut the little squares here from the leftovers. 
So um, I just think that makes it more efficient to cut a strip first. So I'm continually kind of adding in the pattern um, what I can, you know, cut as a strip or what I could cut as individual squares. And just a note on cutting tools, um, these are a couple of the tools that I like. I'll grab another shorter ruler too. So I like the small 28 millimeter. 28 millimeter rotary cutter just because it's really easy for maneuvering around the ruler when you're cutting scrappy rather than cutting just big strips and full squares if you're cutting lots of little pieces this rule this cutter is so much easier to work with so I rarely use a big cutter I mainly use this one I also like the Omni grid rulers and the reason I like them and let's see if I can zoom in close so do you see how there is a center black line and then it's surrounded in a thicker yellow line so I was taught when I first started quilting that you're going to cut even with the outside edge of the yellow line. Now in quilting we talk a lot about accuracy, so you're probably assuming that you would cut uh, based off of that center black line. But if your blocks consistently turn out a little bit too small, if you start cutting along the outside edge of that yellow line, so you're cutting just a thread or two bigger, you're going to find that your blocks are going to grow just a little bit and that's going to help out with that problem a little bit. So if you have issues with your blocks turning out too small, that's something that you could try. So um, now that we have our cutter and our ruler and we've done just a little bit of the math to make the cutting chart work, then we can go ahead and cut out those pieces. So I'm going to do that quick. Okay, so now we're ready to cut some of the pieces for our outer star frame. Now you'll notice on this particular set of instructions there's two different diagrams. And what this is for is if you have any directional prints like the one I'm showing here, you're going to want to cut like the diagram as shown in the instructions. If you don't have directional prints, you can cut like this. And that's going to allow us to turn our pieces in a little bit different direction later on when we're sewing. So we're going to start out with... Um, cutting this section here and we're going to cut this into four rectangles going this way and then this section up here we're going to cut at five inches and we're going to cut this into rectangles going the opposite direction so that's why I have you cutting the directional prints this way so we get some rectangles this way some rectangles that way so I'm going to go ahead and cut that now Okay, now we've cut our fat eighths up and you'll have a scrap that looks like this from one of the fabrics and a scrap that looks like this. So you can save those just in case you make a mistake anytime throughout the quilt. There isn't much left over so you see that you need to cut carefully and efficiently. And then I just wanted to show you, here's the block where the directional prints are. So that's why I had you cutting those. So if you want to pay attention to the way those fall in the block so they're going the same direction, you're going to want to pay attention when you cut those pieces for the outer star frame. So if you want to cut faster, you can always layer multiple fat eighths on top of each other. That's what I do. I'm comfortable cutting, so therefore I just want to get done faster so I can get to the fun part, which is the sewing. So I do a lot of layering. So I'm also going to show a little video on cutting the background fabrics to make that go a little faster. And then as far as the sashing and the outer border fabrics, you don't need to cut those this week. You can save those for when we get to that step. But I'll have just a quick little video next on how to cut those background pieces a little quicker, and then we'll get to the sewing. So one other quick tip that I wanna share on cutting is um, how to make it go a little bit faster and a little more, bit more efficiently. So I am cutting the cream background and I'm cutting the two and three quarter inch squares. So I have all the strips, I'm, I cut 13, I have them all lined up on top of each other, quite a few layers at a time and all lined up straight. And I'm going to go ahead and cut through all of those at once. So keep in mind, you have to have a very sharp blade to do this and you can see how I'm sliding the ruler and my hand, I shouldn't say sliding the ruler, sliding my hand with the cutter so that I have the fabric very stable as I'm cutting through all of these layers. But as you can see, I'm cutting tons of squares all at once, so it goes really fast if you do it that way. One drawback to it is if you make a wrong cut, 
of course you're cutting you know 20 squares wrong at one time or in this case I'm probably cutting you know even more than that so it's something to do if you're really confident in your cutting but I think it's a great time saver so I do this a lot So let's begin with step one, where we're gonna be making our half square triangles. Um, so we're gathering up our two inch squares of the background fabric and our colored prints that are for the center star. So there's several different methods that you can use to do half square triangles. So this is the block that we're gonna be making. And I've got a few pieces cut here. One method that you can do is take your two squares and then just cut them diagonally in half and then sew those triangles together. Now, I don't like that method because, of course, it involves working with bias. So anytime you cut diagonally across those threads, it makes bias and then you get very stretchy edges. So as you're sewing, you end up stretching out your block and you get kind of a distorted shape. So you might end up with something that is you know, stretched this way and not completely square. So I prefer to avoid bias whenever possible. Uh, my favorite method for doing this is just to draw a line. So you can see my line here. Um, I guess it's maybe not showing up as well on camera as it could, but there's my diagonal line. And I've sewed a quarter of an inch away on either side. And that um, takes any bias out of the equation because I sew first and cut later. This also allows you to align your foot um, you know, with either the very center of the line or if you align it with, say, the outs, just a little bit along the outside edge. Let's see if I can get that to pick up on camera. So that you get a little bit of a scant seam in there and that allows for the turn of the fabric a little bit so that you don't lose anything when you're sewing. Um, and then after you're done sewing, you can cut on that diagonal line and then you'll end up with two blocks that look like this. Now, if you don't like to take the time to draw all those lines, because it is a little putsy, there are a couple different methods that you can do instead. Um, the first one you can see is I have this diagonal seam tape by Cluck Cluck Sew. Um, just put down on the bed of my machine. It is sticky, kind of like masking tape. So you just stick it down. You do have to get it perfectly lined up with your needle and coming straight down. Um, and then what you can do is you start with the edge of your foot in the tip of the square. I'll start sewing here and get onto my piece. And then you're gonna keep the tip of the square lined up with that black line. And that just automatically draws that line along there for you. So there are several different lines here. The center line is used for folded corners. This outside line is used for doing half square triangles. So uh, you can go ahead and chain piece several of them together and just continue following the tip of that square with the tip of the drawn line. Um, I personally don't think this method is quite as accurate as drawing the line, but it's pretty, it's pretty darn cool. So I guess it depends maybe on how fussy, how fussy you are about that. So then after you're done with sewing the one side, then you're going to go along the other side and repeat. Then let me show you a couple other methods. Um, this is a tool that I got many, many years ago called the Angler. I'm not even sure if it's still in production, but there might be something similar. And this you tape down onto the bed of your machine, and you can see there's three lines on there that do the exact same thing as the diagonal seam tape. So this is a little bit bulkier, and you have to remove it you know, every time you're sewing squares, or if you have to get it your bobbin case or whatever. So this is a little less bulky. Um, there's also this product. Mine is pretty worn here, but I'll see if I can get the package. There you go, Clearly Perfect Angles by Newly Stitches. And this is a, a cling um, piece of plastic. So once you get it lined up, then you can stick it down and it'll stay. And again, it has these lines and they're colored. So if you have trouble seeing this line, maybe this is a better reference for you. But those two tools do the exact same thing. 
Now, if you don't have any of those tools and you like this method, you can also just stick down a plain piece of masking tape and use your ruler and a fine point Sharpie and draw your own lines. And it would do, you know, the same thing. So whatever method you want to use, you can go ahead and sew down the other side of all of those triangles. Now this week we're going to be doing all of them. So it's a total of, you know, depending on what size quilt you're making, I'm doing the three by four. So I'm going to make 12 sets of four. So there'll be four of these blocks and I'm going to make 12 sets out of the different colors. Here I've got some peach and I've got some navy and stuff ready to go. So after you're done sewing this, you can go to the iron and I pressed all of my seams toward the color. And I'm also going to show you a little uh, trimming technique next. So I'm going to reset up my camera and we'll switch over to that. Okay, let's start with doing uh, the cutting of our little squares here. You can go ahead and just cut down the middle of the line if you want. The thing I don't like about that method is when you go to press, you're going to have all these little dog ears hanging out on each piece. And then you end up having to trim all those little pieces. And, you know, there's four little ones on each little square. So the method that I prefer to do is I just cut a little square out of the corner. So it's just a quarter of an inch like that. And that way when you open it up, those little ears are already gone. So I know not everybody likes to take the time to do that, but you get such you know, nicer points later if that extra bulk is taken out of the corner. So you can see I'm just quickly doing a rough quarter inch cut out of each of those. Then after that, I'm going to use the rotary cutter and I'm going to take that drawn line. I don't know if you can even, you can kind of see on the navy here, but I'm going to line that drawn line up with one of the lines on my mat, like so. And then what I can do is take my rotary cutter and you can do a bunch if you have a bunch and then you can cut them all at once and then you can go over to the ironing board and press. So it's just a way to make things go a little faster, especially in this quilt where we have a lot of these little squares. Okay, so the next step would be to do, uh, check the proof size on these. So these are supposed to finish at one and five eighths. So you can take your ruler with the clear acrylic markings and lay it down on top and make sure that it is the one and five eighths. Now I can see I'm just a tiny bit big on that one corner. So if you need to, you can do some trimming. You see I have the diagonal line on my ruler laying up, uh, following the diagonal line on the block. Not really much to trim on that corner, but when I turn it around, you'll see there's a little bit that I can trim on this corner here. And the reason I have the diagonal line lined up with the seam line is so that when you trim, you keep a nice point there. So see, I got just a slight little fuzz right there. Um, so if you're pretty accurate, you don't necessarily need to do this on all of them, but I always check the first few and make sure it looks good. And if you're having to trim a lot, you may want to go through and trim all of them. Um, but hopefully you're sewing accurately enough that they're pretty close. And I know some people like to cut their blocks larger and sew the half square triangle and then trim down to the size. So if you want to do that, you're going to want to cut all these like two and an eighth inch instead of two. But I prefer just to sew accurately the first time and not have to do all that extra trimming. Because if you cut larger, of course, you have to square up and trim every single block. And if you're sewing accurately, hopefully you don't have to do that at all. So that's our assignment for this week, is just to make all those sets of the half square triangles. Uh, pretty easy to do, just a little bit time consuming depending on what size you're making for the quilt. Um, so next week we're going to go on to step two, and we're going to turn these into some cute little blocks. Okay, so that wraps up our instruction and our sewing for week one. I mentioned to you that I would give you something to screenshot for the schedule. So you can see what the dates are on weeks one through seven. If you notice, we are going to take a, a several weeks break for the holidays, so you won't need to worry about sewing over Christmas or New Year's. And I've also put the hashtag down here, so if you want to show us what you're working on, you can do that. So go ahead and screenshot that. 
And if you're on my email list, I will also be sending this out via email so you can print it from there and save it or put it in your sewing room, whatever you want to do. So uh, thanks again for joining me and we'll see you back here next week.